Hello everyone. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Wednesday night stream. <clears throat> so before we get started with Resident Evil tonight, I thought we'd dabble a little bit with AI Dungeon. This is a a new app. Um, let's see if I can describe it well enough. Let's get the description here from their from the website AIDungeon.io. That it's free right now to play um, on the App Store or on Google Play. They're um, coming out with a Windows app um, soon. Yeah, it says coming soon. This is a infinitely generated uh, RPG with limitless options, bleeding edge AI technology. Each game is a unique story written just for you, partially by you because you influence an AI. It, it's a little bit more than a chat bot though, because um, it takes the entire story every single time and builds on it and doesn't just kind of guess um, for anyone that's familiar with chat bots from the past where um, you know just kind of like picks something based off of what you just said recently this is like a learning algorithm and it's based off of other stories I'm sure that have been fed into it this is the second iteration of it the first version is available online I, I checked that out a little bit and that was just a little bit more um, chaotic this one is a little bit more structured, I think, and I think it has some, some better feeder material, probably. Um, this is a guess off the top of my head. I've done a few stories for myself just to test it out uh, on my phone, and so now we're... Uh, let's actually turn down this back, background music a little bit. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it'll be decent ambient music for what we're, what we're doing, but we don't need it to be super high. Just a sec here. There we go. Now, it does let you start with some some canned settings, so we'll probably start with one of those. The custom setting just kind of lets you build it yourself, um, and I'll kind of let you see how that goes. Let's start off with, uh, yeah, let's start with a fantasy story. We'll do a few stories tonight, um, or maybe just a couple. Depends on how long they go. They can devolve into madness. Excuse me, and we'll have to choose when to end it when that's the case um because it doesn't really end itself or rather the story can sometimes bring itself to a satisfying close but you really have to choose when to actually stop uh so let's get started pick a setting we'll go with the fantasy select a character noble knight squire wizard ranger peasant rogue i kind of think that peasant might be the funniest in this case I do like to go funny with this. I mean, I guess you could get serious. This tends to get nihilistic sometimes. Peasant. Enter your character's name. Uh, we'll be... Squart. Squart the peasant. Generating story. <clears throat> Let's get scoot scooted up here. You are Squart, a peasant living in the kingdom of Larian. You have a pitchfork and nothing else. You wake up and begin working in the fields. You see your sister, who is about your age, with her boyfriend, who is about your age, but not quite as young as you. It's about your age, but not quite as young as you. So um, we have a pitchfork, and we have begun working in the fields. Um, to, in order to speak, you just put it in quotes. Hello, sister. Takes a moment in between, just so you know. We have to wait for it to load. Hi there, I'm Squart. I live here. I'm Emily. I'm only 15 years old. I'm John. I'm only 10 years old. Her, her husband, I guess. Middle ages. I'm Henry. I live here too. Where did Henry come from? I thought John was her husband. Which one is your... Or her boyfriend. Right, right. It did say boyfriend. I need to know which one's which. Which one is your boyfriend, Emily? Who is about your age, but not quite as young as you. You look at the boy, and you notice that he has long brown hair and wears a green shirt with a blue collar and green pants with brown shoes. He looks like he could be the father 
of the girl you're seeing right now, but you don't know for sure yet. It's getting weird already. It has done this before where it gets really weird with relations, so let's just kind of maybe jump out of that. Let's see. Um, grab my pitchfork and keep working. You grab the pitchfork that's lying on the ground. You pick it up, hold it in front of you, then you swing it at the boy's head. The boy falls to the ground, but he doesn't fall far from his home. I didn't mean to attack him. I just wanted to keep working. Apologize and help him up. I have music. Let's get something else on. Oh, there we go. You apologize to the boy and help him back to his home. When you get back to his house, you find that the door is open, so you enter it. Inside the house, you find that it looks like a normal house. Well, well, let's get on here. There we go. Well, there you go. Turn around and leave to go back home. Let's see if it s sweeps us in and carries us away or if it actually does what we say. You turn around and leave the farmhouse to go back to your own house. When you get to your own farmhouse, you find that the door is open again, so you enter it again. It does also get obsessed with doors. I've had like three different stories where it gets obsessed with doors and entering and exiting. I enter it again. Look around my house. Who we should come up with our own goal? You look around your farm, your own farmhouse for anything useful or interesting to take with you when you leave this place. Think about going on an adventure. Grab my pouch with two gold coins in it and my one dagger made of wood. You can feed it about as much as you'd like. You grab the pouch of gold coins from the table and put it in your pocket. Then you grab the one dagger made of wood from the table and you put it in your pocket as well. Then you quickly run out of the room to go on an adventure. Run down the road toward the nearest town. I'm glad that worked out. I wonder if it'll remember how many gold coins I told it that I had. You run down the road towards the nearest town, which is a few miles away from where you live. As soon as you reach it, you stop to take a quick look at what's going on there before continuing on your onto your destination. Pass through town and look at the sign at the fork in the road. I'm hoping it'll give me like some interesting town names or something like that. I mean, we can make up our own if we want to. As soon as you pass through town, you notice that there are a lot of people walking along in groups, so you decide to join them instead of continuing on your journey alone. As soon as you reach a group of people, they all stop talking to each other and start talking to you instead. I want to join me on my adventure. I'm going to find and fight a dragon. These sounds, what are these sounds? Is that in the music? Pause. Yes, that's in the music. Skip that. Hi, wanna join me on my adventure? I'm going to find and fight a dragon. I don't know if I should join. No, 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 come with me. We'll do something exciting together. What do we do? Focus on the window here. There we go. Grab 
any weapon you have and we need to journey toward the mountains. Grab any weapon you have, we need to journey towards the mountains. I have a bow, I'll be fine. No, I want a sword. We can go into battle together. I don't have a sword. I don't even have a bow. I wonder if these are like the four different people that we're, that we're talking to, or three different people on the first. I don't have a sword, I have a bow. Let's, let's see. Take everyone to the item shop to get weapons you take everyone into the item shop there you buy weapons for everyone the next day after an exciting adventure you return home I don't want to go home we didn't have an exciting adventure yet look around for my party are they still with me you just disconnected the entire narrative fine it's fine you walk back home and see that the door is open again you quickly enter it but then you realize you forgot something important in your room so you quickly head back to the room where you found the pouch of gold coins and grab it cool you remembered that let's uh let's let's make some assumptions and make it kind of take those uh go outside and meet the party of adventurers so that we can journey toward the mountains. I'm gonna force feed it. You head outside and see that the door is open again. You quickly enter it, but then you realize you forgot something important in your room, so you quickly head back to the room where you found the pouch of cold coins and grab it. It's the exact same prompt. Okay, um. Continue outside. If he gives me the same one again, I'm really going to question why. You continue out of your house and into a forest. Suddenly you hear a loud noise. It sounds like a cannonball hitting your house. And the sound is very loud, but it doesn't seem to be coming from where you think it is. Follow the noise. Sure, I'll let you take me on an adventure then. You're the GM. You follow the noise towards the direction of the cannonball. Soon you come across an old man who looks very tired. He's sitting in a chair with his legs crossed and his hands folded in front of him as if he's trying to sleep. Um, what should we say? Hey there. Well, let's, let's tell it. Yell. Hey there and wake him up. You yell, hey there, wake the old man up, and he gets up out of his chair. He looks at you with tired eyes, but he nods in agreement with your statement. Did you fire a cannon? into the forest? The old man nods in agreement, but he doesn't answer any more questions. He just says that he was just resting in the forest and that he was just thinking about how tired he was before he heard the loud noise earlier. You know, that cannonball hit my house. I'm going to make up that it did. That cannonball hit my house. You know, that cannonball hit my house. The old man looks at you with a confused expression and says he didn't hear anything like that for nodding in agreement with your statement. Point at the man. 
and ask, Will you pay me for the damages? Again, <clears throat> this is AI Dungeon. This is a, uh, a learning algorithm AI. You can play this for free on the App Store and Google Play, and if you find their Patreon, you can contribute uh, $5 and play it on PC, I believe, right now. It's coming out soon for PC. But it's free to play. They just uh, they do need donations for the servers that run this AI. You point at the man and ask, will you pay me for the damages? The old man looks at you with a confused expression and says that he doesn't know what damage you're talking about before nodding in agreement with your statement. He does that every time. The old man's name, Mr. <laughs> Listen. Mr. Poke him in the... I'm going to get aggressive. Poke him in the chest. Pay me 10 gold coins. The old man's name, Mr. Poke him in the chest. Pay me 10 gold coins. The old man's name, Mr. Poke him in the chest. Pay me 10 gold coins, it repeats. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Demand payment in the form of 10 gold coins. We'll try it one more time. We've got it stuck in a loop again. Let's see if it does anything different. Mr. Poke, you fall over and feign, F A I N, feign, feign injury. Taking a while on that one. Mr. Poke, you, I'll pay you 20 gold coins for your son, but only if you let me have my son back. Um, so we could we could feed this all kinds of information. Um, reach into my back. Reach into the bag on my back and pull out a child. Hand the man the child. <laughs> Teaching it new things. Mr. Poke, you, I'll pay you 20 gold coins for your son, he repeats. But only if you let me have my son back. Let him have his son back. Mr. Poke, you! If he just keeps repeating this, we're gonna start a new story. Um, knock him out. Sometimes you have to get violent to jar it. Oh no, it's just gonna keep repeating the same thing. Okay, we're gonna start a new story. Let's do... Oh, refresh button up here. Yeah, we'll restart. This time we'll do a mystery. I've tried to be careful to remember the cursor on the screen since I'm doing screen capture for this one. Select a character, patient, detective, or spy. Let's be a spy. Character's name. Our name will be 007. All one word. You are 007, a spy living in Chicago. You have a concealed pistol and a syringe of poison. You listen to the Russian diplomats and hear them discussing the possibility that you might be useful to, as an informant. So you head to the Russian consulate where you meet with the head of security, who is very friendly. Let's see. Tell me about your op for... Opportunities.
You tell him all, all about your past. He tells you that he has been monitoring your activities for some time now. He says he has been watching you because he knows that you were once part of an organization called the Syndicate. Offer him my services. He accepts and gives you the location of the Syndicate's headquarters in New York City. What shall I do there? He tells you to go to the office and wait for a courier. When the courier arrives, kill him and take his keys from his body. Open up the door and enter the building. Inside, you find a large room with many computers and other electronic equipment. We kind of transitioned into like present tense, did it? Um, instead of future tense. Um, let's see. Let's see. Accept the mission and fly to New York to visit the Syndicate headquarters. Guess that didn't need to be capitalized. You agree to this mission, but you are not sure if it's going to be successful or not, so you decide to fly back home immediately after your visit to the Syndicate headquarters. Go to the Syndicate HQ and await the courier. He says, wait for the courier. When the courier arrives, kill him and take the keys from his body. Open up the door and enter the building. You arrive at your destination, but you're too late as you see a man laying dead on a chair in front of one of those computers. The computer is blinking red, indicating that it is being hacked by someone else. Let's see. Set down at the computer and begin counter hacking it you begin to hack into it but suddenly you feel something hit your shoulder knocking you off balance it is 007 who has killed you with a single blow I was killed by myself he's killed me with a single blow be dead? Yes, you are dead, but why? Why did 007 kill you? What was he doing here? The next day your body is found. No, we're not going to rate it right now. The next day your body is found in a nearby river. A note was left on it saying this place is not safe for spies. You died. Game over. The... End. Let me type that. I do like to see where it says what it says after you type the end. Sometimes it ends, sometimes it doesn't. Ending. The end. Well, what a twist. We weren't even 007. We were killed by 007. Maybe we were the courier. Let's do another story. Uh, we'll, we'll try apocalyptic. Soldier, scavenger, survivor, courier. Stay away from courier this time. Let's be a scavenger. Um, roach. Scourge, a scavenger named Roach. You are Roach, a scavenger trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what is left. You have a rusty knife and a canteen. You walk for two hours and take a break. You've left your town in search of food. You look around and see nothing but dead trees, the ground covered with the corpses of animals. You can't tell if it's animals or people. Suddenly you hear something behind you. You turn to run, but something hits your back, knocking you to the ground as it bites into your leg. 
Uh, let's see, take out my, was it a rusty knife? I'm gonna keep describing it. The more descriptive you are, it kind of hangs on to that, so. Take out my rusty knife and stab at my attacker. You grab the rusty blade from the table and quickly stab at the creature. It lets out an ear-piercing scream as you stab it several times. It lets go of you as blood spurts from its mouth. Gramble to my feet and slash at the creature. You raise your weapon, aiming for the creature's head, but it leaps away from you, running off towards some nearby rocks. You know, I kind of want to chase it. Chase it. To, let's see, chase it. Just chase it. You run after the thing, slashing at its legs, arm, and face until you finally catch up with it. The thing is fast, dodging your attacks as you try to get closer to it. Stab at the creature. The thing dodges your attack and swings its arm towards you. But you manage to dodge by stabbing the blade of your knife into its hand. The beast lets out a cry of pain before chasing after you again. Stab at its heart. I guess they should say chest. I don't know if it has a heart. The beast grabs onto you and throws you to the ground before grabbing a rock nearby and smashing into your head. Your skull crushes under the weight of the rock as blood pours down your face. Squeeze the creature as hard as I can. I mean, I didn't say I was dead yet. Maybe we can grapple with it. You squeeze the life out of the beast, who let out a pained scream of pain before falling to his knees, clutching his bleeding head. Okay, if I squeeze the life out of it, I'm gonna take that as meaning it's dead. So let's see, carve the beast and pack its meat into my bags. I need food. I'll eat an apocalypse beast. You finish carving up the beast, stuffing all of its flesh into your bags. Begin my journey home with my crushed skull. With a smile on your face, you begin walking home, leaving behind a trail of dead bodies in your wake. I guess there were dead bodies there and they are in my wake, but that implies I created them. Um, check my can, canteen, how do you spell canteen? Oh, C-A-N-T-E-E-N, check my canteen for water. Your pack is heavy with food and water, but you have no idea where you're going to find any more food or water, so you decide to take a look in there first. I mean, I look, if it's packed with water, that's fine. Drink some water and keep walking towards my village. Village, home, town. You drink some of the water in the canteen and keep walking towards the village, hoping that you can find something to eat there. I mean, I have the food in my bag. It just needs to be cooked. Approach the village. Sometimes I feel like you get, you get very close to your goal in this, but it doesn't commit. It just kind of is like, yep, you have journeyed towards the village. 
As you approach the village, you see that it is indeed a small one, but it seems to be in good condition. There are a few people milling about, but they seem to be doing nothing useful with their time other than talking to each other and looking at their phones or tablets, which I'm glad that works in the apocalypse. Shout, hey, everyone, I've brought back beast meat for us to cook and eat for dinner. like kid noises in the music that's kind of cool you shout this to the people milling about hoping that they will notice you and come running to help you a few do but most just continue to talk amongst themselves one man does come running up to you but he is clearly not in any condition to help you pull all the beast meat out of the bags and hand it to helpers to get cooking you pull out all the meat from your bags putting it in a large pot the man who came running up does not seem impressed by this gesture so you instead hand him a large bag of meat he takes it gratefully and begins cooking it on a campfire good he's helping summon more townsfolk to Come eat the beast meat. You call upon the townsfolk you summoned earlier and tell them that you have brought back the best parts of the beasts you killed. They cheerfully agree and soon enough you have a crowd gathered around your fire. Take pieces of the beast meat and serve it out to the crowd. That's good. We'll do that. You begin eating the pieces of the beasts you killed, enjoying every bite. The taste is not unlike that of a human's flesh, but much better. It is only when you're finished eating that you notice that your stomach is empty. This is strange, as you were expecting something else. Look at the plate I was eating off of. Is my stomach empty? I killed that beast fair and square. I carved it up myself. You look at the plate I was eating off of and see that it contains nothing but a single piece of flesh. It looks like I ate a human. You feel sick and vomit all over yourself. Your stomach hurts and your head feels like it's going to explode. That wasn't a... It was a creature. Was the creature some sort of human? I say out loud to anyone who will listen. You say this out loud in an attempt to make sense of what just happened. You feel like you're going insane, but you manage to compose yourself. I think I ate a human. A what? A human. Look at the other pieces of meat to see if they look like human meat. Turn to strange cannibalism fast. You look at the other pieces of meats and see that they are indeed all similar in appearance. They are all about the same size. They all, all have a similar color. They do not smell or taste bad, so you decide that they must be humans. They must be humans. Soylent beast meat is people. It's people. Is Soylent S-O-Y? Can we right click there? No, it just doesn't know the word. It's fine.
You shout this out loud in an attempt to make sense of what just happened. You feel like you're going insane, it says again, but you manage to compose yourself. Stop others from eating the meat. <laughs> Taking a while. You stop others from eating the meats and tell them that you need to go to the bathroom. They don't seem too upset about this, though some do leave early. When you return, you find that your stomach hurts and your head feels like it's going to explode again. Ask the old man if what we just did was okay. Give me some exposition, old man. You ask the old man if what you did was okay, and he tells you that it wasn't, but he thinks you should eat something else. He hands you a piece of bread, which you eat in silence. Regret my actions and think about what I want to do tomorrow. After a few minutes, you finish your meal and go to sleep. The next day, you wake up feeling much better than before. Grab my equipment and journey back out in search of more food in the wasteland. The next day you grab your equipment, the next day, and set out for the nearest town in search of more food. As you walk, you begin to notice how different the world seems to be now. Look around. Give me more of a description. Give me more. As you walk through the wasteland, you notice how different it is now that there are no more towns here. As there is no more civilization either, the only signs of life are the occasional animals wandering around or scavengers that come here to steal food from the dead for their own use. Hunt for animals. You can get pretty broad in scope with this. You decide to hunt for animals again, but this time you will try to catch them instead of just killing them. This way you can eat their flesh and gain some nutrition as well as learn how to hunt properly. Complete hunting by catching an animal. After a few hours of hunting, you catch a small rabbit with your bow and arrow. I have a bow. It looks very tasty, so you decide to take it back to the town for some people to eat. We can go through this again. Go back to town with my rabbit. You return with my rabbit back to the town where it is given a proper meal of meat and vegetables before being given a drink of water before being returned home with a new friend. I'd return it home with... The end. The end. Next story. We'll go with a zombie story. Soldier, survivor, scientist. We're a scientist. No, we're a survivor. Your character's name. Greg. Greg, 
You are Greg, a survivor trying to survive. In a world filled with infected zombies everywhere, you have a pistol and a backpack. A back back. You have managed to survive several months avoiding zombies and scavenging food. You cautiously enter a rundown store and hear the sounds of people talking inside. You peek your head out from behind the counter and see two women talking about something. They Then they both turn around as if something has scared them. Then they both turn around again as if nothing had happened. Determine if they can see me. You decide to test the waters. Hi there. The woman looks at you for a while before turning her attention to the door. She turns it slowly and opens it up. The pair of you walk outside. I was in a rundown store. Um, ask. Uh, let's, let's do this. What is your name? I'm Greg. My name's Greg. What's yours? Spaces. My name's Mary. What's yours? She says to you. She seems very friendly and talkative. Does she? Still, Greg. Why are you here, Mary? It's dangerous in... It's dangerous on this side of town. Mary looks at you with a strange look on her face. She doesn't seem to be happy with your answer. Then she turns to the door and closes it. Then she turns back to you. Her face now looks sadder than ever, but she still doesn't seem happy with your answer. Where are you headed? I'm going to Atlanta to find my brother Zeke Mary seems surprised by your response she quickly asks you where you're going and why you're asking I'm going to Atlanta to find my brother Zeke I think he's been killed there I don't know where he is but I need your help in finding him so now she's going to Atlanta. <clears throat> I can help you, exclamation point. Mary seems a little surprised by your response. She quickly asks, how, asks you how you can help her and what you want to do. Show her my motorcycle that I was hiding under a tarp. You quickly show Mary the motorcycle that you were hiding under a tarp. It's a beat up old red one, but it'll do. Mary seems impressed by the bike and says that it must be very valuable, but she doesn't have any money on her. I'll help you for free because you're a human and you don't seem like you'll double cross me. Mary seems surprised by your response. She quickly asks you how you can help her and what you want to do. Ah, there's my response. I'll help you for free because I like helping people. I'm not some mercenary or anything. I like that. I like that ad lib. Thank you. Get on the bike and invite Mary to join. Join me on... A trip to Atlanta. You 
You get on the bike and invite Mary to join you on a trip to Atlanta. Then, as soon as we get there, we can go back home. Okay, I guess that sounds good. You start the motorcycle up and start riding off into the distance. Ask Mary if she is hungry. And if she wants anything to eat, she says that she isn't hungry, but that maybe something would be nice. Then, as soon as we get back home, we can go eat together at a restaurant or something. Reach into my bag and pull out a Snickers bar. Hand Mary the Snickers bar and continue riding down the road. You reach into your bag, pull out a Snickers bar, you hand it to Mary, who takes it with a smile. Then, as soon as we get back home, we can go eat together at a restaurant or something. Stop to get gas at an abandoned gas station somewhere on the border of Tennessee and Georgia. Somewhere near Chattanooga. You stop the motorcycle and ask Mary if she wants to come with you. She says that it'd be great, but it would be a nice it'd be nice to have some food along the way too. Then as soon as we get back home, we can go eat together at a restaurant or something. Examine the gas station station. You examine the gas station and see that it is in ruins, but the sign is still there, so you assume that it's still operational. Siphon gas from the tanks for my motorcycle. You grab the tanks from the wrecked station, then you run over to the wrecked station to grab some more fuel for your motorcycle. As you are doing this, you notice that the sign is still there, so you assume that it's still operational. It repeats itself a lot, at least tonight it is. Fill the tank, fill the gas tank on my motorcycle. Then go near the building to look for food. You never know. Might be able to scavenge some hot Cheetos from the wreckage. As you're filling up your tank, you notice the sign is still there, so you assume it's still operational. Hey, I think I saw a sign of life out here. Look for hot Cheetos. Do we want to get weird? We can get a little weird with it before we finish this for the night. As you're looking for hot Cheetos, you notice the sign is still there, so you assume it's still operational. Hey, I think I saw a sign of life out here. Dig through the wreckage of the building in search of hot Cheetos. You dig through the wreckage of the building in search of hot Cheetos and find a few bags of them. You take one and you run over to the wreck station to grab some more fuel for your motorcycle. Pack up. Eat Cheetos. Continue to Atlanta. And 
No zombie attacks so far. You pack up your bags, and you and Mary have a snack before continuing on to Atlanta. I think I found a few bags of hot Cheetos in this building. Yeah, I'm sure they're in this building. I wonder where they are. You're a little late. We're, we've, we're continuing on to Atlanta. Reach at Atlanta and begin to look... You know what? We're, we're going to stop beginning to do things. And look for Zeke. You reach Atlanta, and you and Mary have a snack before continuing on to Atlanta. As it repeats itself. I wonder where they are. Stop dreaming about Cheetos and shout Zeke! You know, just at Atlanta. You stop dreaming about Cheetos and shout Zeke to your brother. He appears, and you both start running towards each other. Suddenly, you hear a gunshot behind you. You turn around to see a man with a shotgun pointing at you. He fires, but misses your brother completely. Did I have a gun? Check my pockets for a gun. You check your pockets and find nothing but a cell phone, which you throw away. The man with the shotgun points his gun at you, but you drop the phone and run away. The man with the shotgun follows you. He shoots at your legs several times, but misses completely. Grab a gas can from my bike and hurl it at the man with the shotgun. You grab the gas can from my bike and hurl it at the man with the shotgun. He catches it, but doesn't use it. Instead, he turns around to see who threw it, and that person is you. Strike a, I'm just gonna pretend like I have it. Strike a match and toss it at him and the gas-soaked can. Hasta la vista, baby with a shotgun. You strike the match, throw the can, then hurl the match as hard as you can at the man with the shotgun. The match explodes on impact, but not before he takes off running. As he runs away, you pick up your cell phone and call 911. Help. I've been attacked by a man with a shotgun. We're going to have to end this one soon. To the operator on the other end of the phone, she answers, but you don't want to hear her voice any more than you did when she was calling you. Hang up and eat the cell phone. As you hang up, you realize that the woman on the other end of the phone is your mother. She asks if you're okay, to which your answer is in the negative. She asks if she can come get you, to which you answer in the negative as well. Continue to eat the phone. As you continue to eat your cell phone, you realize that your mother's right. There's no need for her to come get you now. <laughs> Lay down and give up. <laughs> A 
As soon as your stomach is full of food, you lie down and give up on this pointless dream. The end. The end. All right, we'll do one last one. This one we'll do a custom. Enter a prompt that describes who you are and the first couple sentences of where you start. You are... Scott. You are a garbage man in the city of Plumsburg. Does that look? Yeah, Plumsburg. You have discovered a strange alien species in a dumpster behind the Stuckey's restaurant. They appear to be babies and you can't seem to communicate with them. You have hidden them in your truck. <laughs> You're a Scott, your garbage man in the city of Plumsburg. You've discovered a strange alien species in a dumpster behind the Stuckey's restaurant. They appear to be babies and you can't seem to communicate with them. You have hidden them in your truck. The aliens will only speak to you if you give commands, and they will only listen if you give commands as well, but they don't understand anything else about you other than that you're their friend and that they want to come home. Tell me where your home is. You stand up from the table, grab the baby by its foot, and point it out to the aliens. Where's your home? I don't know. I just know it's there. Ask them if they want a ride in my truck. I don't know where they want to go. The aliens look at you, then at the baby. Where'd the baby come from? Then back at you. They nod their heads slowly, as though agreeing with you. They begin to walk over towards the truck. Get in the truck together and drive toward where the aliens are pointing. I'm going to make up the fact that they're pointing. Let's see what it says. You put your hand on the wheel and begin driving towards the alien's direction. But before you do, you turn around and start walking back to the table with your hands on your hips. I knew I forgot a drink for the road. Grab a six pack of PBR, then go to the truck and drive. Drink responsibly, do not drink and drive. Scott, though, not a good role model. You grab a six pack of PBR, open it up, take a drink. Then you grab another one, open it up, take another drink, close it again, take another drink. It's not going to be enough to get you through this trip. Where are we headed? I asked, pretending like they didn't already tell me they didn't know. We're headed to your house. What? Where? Your house. I know you said you had no idea where it was. I'm going to find it for you. Maybe that's what I said. And I and it took the quote that I said is what they said. Ride up the nearby mountain until I get to the old TV Broadcast antenna. All 
Oh, this song's called Space Chatter. Maybe it'll be a good one. I don't think so. I'm not going to leave you alone out here. I'll be fine. Okay, okay. But I need to know where your house is. Oh, I don't know. Use the equipment at the TV. Well, let's see. Tell the aliens to use the TV antenna equipment to find their home. Tell the aliens that you're going to use the antenna equipment and that you'll be back soon with a map of the city. The aliens nod their heads slowly and begin walking away from you. Okay, use the antenna equipment and print out a map to their home. We're just going to pretend like that was something we could do. You use the antenna equipment and print out a map of the city with all of your locations marked on it. Then you return to the table and put your head in your hands. Sigh uncontrollably and point to their home on the map. It's in Biloxi. Biloxi, you say, not knowing what else to say. The aliens look at you for a moment, then turns around and walks away. Get in the truck together and drive to Biloxi. Get in the truck together and drive towards Biloxi, but before you do, you turn around and start walking back to the table with your hands on here. It really wants me to... I'm back at the table again. Grab two more six-packs of PBR and then... And then drive to Biloxi. You can't make a trip to Biloxi without PBR. Time. Grab two more six packs of PBR, open them both, take a drink, close them again, take a drink. It's not going to be enough to get you through this trip. It's nice we've come full circle. Arrive at Biloxi and look around the place that is the alien's home. You arrive at the place that is the alien's home. It's a small trailer park with a few trailers in it. There are several people inside of them. They're all asleep, or fast asleep. Drop off the aliens. Well, it was nice to meet you both. You drop off the aliens at a trailer park, then you walk back towards the table, but you don't see them anymore. The table. Ask the table. Why are you always ten feet behind me? The alien's eyes widen in surprise as you walk up to him. He turns his head slightly, but doesn't look at you. He just stares blankly ahead as he continues staring at nothing. The alien's mouth opens slightly, but he doesn't speak. Why does the table always seem to be stacked with PBR? Why is there life 
in front of me and a table of PBR behind me at all times. The alien's eyes widen even further as you speak. He turns his head slightly, but doesn't look at you. He just stares blankly ahead. The alien's mouth opens slightly, but he doesn't speak. Ask the question again. Give me something else. Why is there life in front of me and a table of PPR behind me all, at all times? The alien's eyes widen even further. He doesn't look at you. Put my hands on his shoulders and shake him, asking the same question again, only louder this time. Just a blank. Shake him harder. <laughs> Why is there life in front of me and a table PPR behind me at all times? Push the alien down and turn away from him. Scott's mad. Needs answers. Why is there life in front of me and a table of PBR behind me at all times? The same, the same response. Stagger away from the time loop and get in my truck. Get in the truck. It doesn't seem to like possessives very much, uh, referring to yourself. Stagger away from the time loop and get into the truck, which has been parked nearby for a while now. The truck starts up and you drive off towards your destination, which you don't know yet. Look in the rear view, rear space view, mirror to see if I'm being followed by a table <laughs> stacked with PBR. <laughs> you turn your head to the rear and see the table stacked with bottles of beer, cans, soda, and a few other things. I want to ask questions like directly to the storyteller, but I know that doesn't work well if I just put in like, is it, um, slam on the brakes to get the table to smash into the back of my truck. You slam on the brakes hard to avoid the pileup, which you didn't even notice was happening until it was too late. Fortunately, you managed to avoid a crash, though you do lose control of your vehicle and it skids across the road several times before coming to a stop. Look for PBR. Surely it's somewhere. You search the pack seat for some cans of soda, but find nothing. The truck is totaled, though. You're lucky it didn't flip over completely since you would have probably died in the resulting fire explosion. Say to myself. Phew, the table is gone. like a fever dream. 
You say to yourself, whew, the table's gone. As you walk out of your wrecked vehicle, the aliens are still there, but they're nowhere to be seen. They must have left when you slammed on your brakes. They, I dropped them off at the trailer park. Set on the side of the road and put my head in my hands while I wait for emergency services. You sit on the side of the road and put your head in your hands, waiting for emergency services to arrive. It's only after a few minutes that you hear sirens approaching. Stand up and flag down an ambulance. Stand up and flag down an ambulance, but it's already too late. A large explosion occurs and you're as you're thrown to the ground, sending shrapnel flying everywhere. Your body is severely burned, but you're at live you're alive at last. Like this is what Scott needed to be alive. Look for the source of the explosion. My body is severely burned. Poor Scott. You look around and see that you're in a burnt out wasteland. There are no signs of life anywhere. You search around for any sign of life, but you can't find anything. Are we in the apocalypse? What do my clothes look like? Oh, I shouldn't have asked a question like that. I should have said, look at my clothes. It might answer correctly. Go to your pockets and you're surprised to find you have no clothes at all. Your skin is burned and you're covered in shrapnel wounds. You'd be unrecognizable without a shirt or pants to cover them up with. Check for bleeding and look for a rag. We're going to wrap pretty soon on this one and uh, head over to Resident Evil, but this has been a pretty good look at AI Dungeon. Again, you can find them at AIDungeon.io, I believe. Let me double check that for you. Yes, AIDungeon.io to see more about them. You check your pockets and you find that you have no wounds at all. So you're not bleeding at all. It's then that you realize that you've been wearing a shirt with a tie around it, which has fallen off in the chaos. So I'm wearing a shirt. Winnie the Pooh it over to a tree and sit down to to rest you take the shirt and tie off your body then you lie down on the ground to recover from your injuries I'm going to die here you think as you lie there take shallow breaths Farther, let's see, fewer and farther between until I can no longer breathe. I don't know why, but he's dying. Taking shallow breaths fewer and farther between, you try to keep your heart rate down as much as possible. I'm going to die here, you think, as the pain becomes unbearable. I'm going to die here. Succumb to the pain and die. It's so blunt. Your body is in agony, but you're not going to give in to it. Death is coming soon anyway, so why not enjoy it now? Death is a beautiful thing after all. Embrace death with a smile. Cheers.
Your face contorts into a smile as you embrace death with a smile. The end. The end. So that's uh, that's AI Dungeon. Really fun. Again, you can get it on your phone for free, but do support them uh, on their Patreon so that they can advance. Uh, they can make advancements with this game, and they can continue to support the servers that run this. Because without those, the game wouldn't wouldn't actually work. You need an internet connection, and uh, their servers have to respond to you. But we're gonna take a five minute break, and I'll be back with some more Resident Evil Two. Merry Christmas. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 